Hi, and welcome to episode 32 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. <laughs> I almost forgot to say my name. <laughs> um, and in this episode, we are talking about Fae and Fae Queens. And I know that we've already done an episode on the Fae with Witch Wednesday podcast, which is, I'm going to say, what episode? Episode 22. <laughs> go yeah, watch. Definitely. Go, go check. Go, I said go, go watch. watch. <laughs> Go, go check listen. it out. Yeah, go listen if you already haven't. And um, today we are focusing on Faye Queens a little bit more um, because we've already talked about Faye, but we're talking about yeah. that a little bit more in depth. Than yeah, what we, we, had, we we never really talked about the Faye courts or the mm-hmm. Faye royalty. So mm-hmm. we'll get into more of that today. Yes. And I also wanted to talk, talk, thank, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I also wanted to thank one of our patrons, 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 I always mess that up, for requesting this topic. Thank you, Adrian. We are so excited to cover this topic for you. Well, given how you just spoke, I'm wondering, what are you drinking, Ren? <laughs> I am drinking hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, well, then you've got no excuse. No. Uh, I'm drinking tea. My One of my kids has strep throat and uh, my throat is now starting to feel a little sore throaty. So I'm drinking hot tea oh, today. I no. got a headache as well. So oh, no. Eh, anyway. Yeah. Blech. But I guess let's go ahead and get into it. Um, first, we're going to, I'm going to, I wanted to do a little recap about like, what are the Fae? Okay. You know? So Fae come in all shapes and sizes and vary in what they do and where they are. Um, A definition Mm -hmm. from, (laughs) I pulled this definition from um, the Urban Dictionary, which we all know what the Urban Dictionary is, (laughs) but I thought it was okay. Like uh, a a definition of fae is a humanoid mystical creature that wields great power in magic and elements. That's that's not a bad definition. It's not too bad. I did take out some things because some things in that post were spelled wrong and everything. Yeah. Oh Lord. Okay. I thought that that summed it up pretty well, and it's it's not bad, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in Celtic lore uh, and legend, the Fae are associated with magical underground caverns and springs, Mm -hmm. and it was believed that a traveler who went too far into one of these places would find themselves in the fairy realm, which Mm -hmm. I think is cool. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, because it's hard to get there on purpose Mm -hmm. unless you're invited. But yeah. you can wander into those areas by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't just go wandering like on purpose for the purpose of finding like it's mm-hmm. purely on accident. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the fairy or fae developed ind- independently in a number of cultures, including uh, Sla- Slavic, English, Persian, French, German and Celtic. So yeah, that is fascinating to me. That it- was When we talked in episode 22 with Witch Wednesday podcast, we we all were kind of astounded at how they developed and and enter independently of Mm -hmm. one another. Um, That, to me, means something. Uh, To me, too. But what's really interesting and... Uh, I'm so, I'm I'm sort of like a uh, I'm not gonna say history buff. I'm a history buff in some areas, okay. Mm-hmm. And with when it comes to um, like art history and that type of stuff, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see how relics are very similar um, in different cultures from around the world. Like they had no contact with each other, but things are very similar. Like for instance, uh, the creation of like woven patterns and carpets Mm -hmm. and, um, thing like tapestries were created and they were all created around the world relatively around the same time. But these, these civilizations didn't have contact with each other. That's so crazy. Isn't it? So I just, I love things like that. And, um, and I know that, finding out about like the fae is a little bit different than like, like civilizations, like growing and becoming yeah. more intelligent and stuff like that. But it's interesting. It's kind of like the same topic kind of. That, that is fascinating. <laughs> um, and then the word fairy was first used around 700 years ago in the English language. And the first words for them were like elf, goblin, imp. Hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and then the true definition, which true quote unquote, you know, right, right. of a fairy is uh, not stuck in one image and it means someone from the other world which I thought was okay. pretty cool. You know, mm-hmm. and maybe we, I think that there's enough to talk about, about the other world just for like a whole topic. So we'll have I to, think talk, so too. like we'll yeah. have to like do another episode on that. But the fae folk are compromised of many different creatures. Um, there is no specific one type of fairy. And so I want to get into types of fae. <laughs> okay. Cause some of these I didn't know. Yeah. And so, um, I go, I'm going in uh, alphabetical. So it's no like. Okay. So we have the Banshee. We had um, Banshee, blue Banshee drinks for our Halloween party. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have a, and I don't know if I'm going to say it right, a Bogart. Mm -hmm. And I read that a brownie, when they're mad, turns into a Bogart. Yes. Do you, I don't know if this is, you're probably too um, young for this, but uh, the Spiderwick series. Yes. I love they, those books. They had that uh, in that fictional series, mm-hmm. how a, a Boggart is really a brownie that's mm-hmm. turned angry. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if that's true. I didn't research it, but that's what I've heard from like mm-hmm. multiple sources, but not like anything like like pinned down. Right. Um, so yeah. And then we have brownies and then we have changelings. We have mm-hmm. dryads, uh, doulons, right. Am I saying oh, that right? Or I doulons. pronounce it doulahan, but doulahan. I could be totally wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are elves and I, I don't know how to say this one. Jean Canac. Yeah. I don't know what that one is. Um, and we can go into deep, like deep detail in another episode about each individual one. Oh yeah, that, for that sure. That would be so much fun. Um, mm-hmm. we have gnomes, uh, kobolds or kobold, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. pronunciation wise. And then we have Lady of the Lake. She is one of my favorites. I have always loved the stories about King Arthur and the Lady of the Lake protecting Excalibur. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see that movie by M. Night? Shia Malin, um, he did a movie called Lady in the Lake. You remember that one? No, I don't remember uh, that, that one. I love his twist on that story, the story of the Lady in the Lake. Um, one of my favorite all-time movies. Um, you know, it's it's hard to say. We've all been so inundated with fictional stories mm-hmm. about the Fae that we don't know what's true quote true and not true yeah yeah. i mean some of the fictional stories are based on true legends so Mm -hmm. or or legends that came from somewhere actual Mm -hmm. legends in our history um but some are just true you know totally fictional stories to for the entertainment of the reader so i don't know but i do love the lady in the lake she is one of my favorites yeah. Yeah. It's hard because even stories being passed down from like generation to generation, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the game of telephone. Those mm-hmm. things get muddled and it changes. So who's to even like know what what's the truth and what's not, yeah. unless if you've actually interacted with the Fae. And then again, you don't interact with every single type of Fae, you know? Right. Right. Um, yeah. Um, the next one is Liana. She, 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 she. Mm -hmm. I think we've had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. We have. (laughs) Um, And then leprechauns, mermaids, which I didn't know were a category of fae. Like I just like mermaids, you know. Yeah. But, Mm -hmm. and which I thought was really cool. Uh, Nymphs, pixies, the puka. (laughs) Yes. The puka. (laughs) We talked about the puka before. And I, when I saw it, I was like, I know that one. (laughs) Uh, salamanders, silky. Aren't, aren't salamanders like lizards, like uh, water lizards? Yeah, they're they're a fay. They're fay. I think it's a different type. Huh. Yeah, I would like to do yeah, research on that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. Silky. Uh. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna say this right. Trows. Yeah, T-R-O-W. I've I've heard it pronounced trows, trows. Trows. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's a you're gonna have to help me with this one. <laughs> Tuatha de Danon. Tuatha de Danon. Oh yeah, I remember we talked about this one um, on which other, Wednesdays. Yeah, mm-hmm. the other one while I was having technical difficulties, so I barely got to. Even <laughs> oh hear yeah, anything. yeah, that's right. Um, um, 
Un, what? How would you like? Un, I don't know. Undines. undines. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go with that because you're better at pronunciation. I, than I am. Not really. No. <laughs> um, undines and Willow the Wisp. Yeah, I love the Willow the Wisps. Wisps. With the, the, they're also called Willow Wisps. You can can leave out the 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 the. the, <laughs> the, the. Um, but those are really cool. There's a lot of legends that that surround the willow wisp. We that would be a really good one to do an mm-hmm. episode on. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's probably a bunch more that we humans don't even know about. Yeah, because sure. the fae don't like us, so they're not going to let be seen. So yeah. yeah, there's probably a bunch that we don't know about. But the ones listed have interacted with humans enough that there are stories about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, okay. I want to go off a little bit. I love the idea of like, I don't know, stories and how they've been passed on, but it's in each different, you know, culture and that have no contact with each other. Like mermaids, Mm -hmm. for example, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like every single like, like past civilization has history of mermaids Mermaids. like like on the coast or by water, but it's so interesting because nowadays, nowadays you're like, oh, mermaids aren't real, you know, like mm-hmm. people are like, oh, no, that's not true. And then with all the technology that we have, like cameras, we should have at least caught one, you know. I don't, I don't know. know. The, the ocean is still largely unexplored. Mm-hmm. We can only get down to certain depths and there, there's so much more below what we can get to to even be able to see. Yeah. What's down there. So we don't know. I saw a post on TikTok, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was very interesting because, um, and I, I was sold on this theory. Okay. I was mm-hmm. like, I've sold. So you know how they, uh, in like Viking and old history, they have the um, giant I, monsters. I don't know what else to call them, you know, like, okay. like the serpent and like everything like that. I don't really know enough. To, Ocean monsters like, like the Kraken. Yeah. Or? Like the Kraken and, and other things, you know, but mostly sea monsters. And with us only being able to explore about like, what is it like 5% of the ocean or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this person, I can't remember who it was and I can't even find it because I didn't like it or anything. Um, but they were talking about how the warming periods of the earth affect when these, I, I don't want to call them monsters, but these things uh. come out. So when it's cold, they go into like quote unquote hibernation. And since our world, since like, um, and they had a chart of the years yeah, when those were, yeah, since, um, yeah. The, all of the um, the stories came out about the Kraken and all of the, like the serpent and everything. And then when the world was cold again, and like the charts dipped in like the mid like thousands, like thousands to now, you know, and mm-hmm. now we're starting to heat up. And like, since there's a whole ton of like, like problems going on right now, obviously people are going to, you know, oh, the Kraken is coming back out because we're in a warming period. I, and that's I, fascinating. Yeah, I was the, sold. <laughs> the, that makes sense. The climate does change. I mean, mm-hmm. even before we started as humans messing up the, the with the carbon emissions and all of yeah. that, there were natural cycles of cold yeah, and, like and warm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So that is fascinating. Isn't it? And they also stated something else. I just had it in my head. Hold on. Um, um, let me think. Uh, oh, and oh, there it is. <laughs> my head. Um, <laughs> how the stories, like the legends, quote unquote legends and stories stopped when it was the cold period because they weren't out and about anymore and like wreaking havoc on the people in the ocean. But now that it's starting to warm up, I feel like there could be some problems. I feel like if that was going to happen, it would have been in 2020. (laughs) (laughs) True. True. It's very true. That's interesting. Yeah. Isn't it? But okay. 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 Let's, let's get back to, back to uh, the Fae. Fae. Yeah. Okay. So where, um, where there are, where there are Fay, right? Well, do they have a leader? You know, question mark, mm-hmm. question mark, right? Mm-hmm. So let's talk about Fay queens a little bit. Okay. 
So the fairy queen or queen of the fairies is a figure from Irish and British quote unquote folklore, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, like lore myth, myth. Like I, I was reading a whole ton. It was like, Oh, the, uh, what it was like the fictional characters, Faye. Mm-hmm. And like, so a lot right. of this is just muddled, you know, in between what's fiction, not fiction, um, is believed and they're believed to rule the fairies. Okay. And they were also woven deep into Shakespearean mm-hmm. plays. And he talks about Titania. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's and, how I pronounce it. Okay. And Mab. And mm-hmm. so uh, Mab is also called Queen Mab in English folklore, the queen of the fairies and Mab. And those are two different queens. Just Yes. Not, two different queens. Yes. And Mab is a mischief is mischievous, but basically benevolent figure. Right. And go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say Shakespeare had a lot of the Fae in his works mm-hmm. that he wrote. I wonder if he ever met any or something because, Maybe that would you, be know, cool, you know, he did put them into his works fairly often. A lot. And um, also in William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, um, she is referred to. So Mab is referred to as the fairy's uh, midwife who hmm. uh, deliver sleeping men of their innermost wishes in the form of dreams. Interesting. I haven't, I haven't read Romeo and Juliet since eighth grade, so I don't well, remember. Yeah. I haven't read it in a while either. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Mab is similarly mentioned as a pixie like fairy in works of um, Ben Johnson and Johnson Milton and uh, Ro- Robert uh, Herrick. If you've heard mm-hmm. any, any of their stories. Uh, her place as a queen of the fairies is English folklore um, and was eventually taken over by Titania. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And the idea of fairy royalty is very much a like projection of medieval structures by medieval writers. So yes. So it's kind of hard, again, to differentiate between what was fiction, what was what's real, you know. Yeah, Queen Mab plays a huge role in the Dresden Files, those books by Jim Butcher, which I think I talk about again later. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I was trying to do research on the queens of the different courts, it popped up Dresden Files constantly. And I'm (laughs) like, I'm not looking for fiction. I'm looking for the actual legends that came Mm -hmm. from the past. So it is, like you said, Mm -hmm. basically the Fae, are seen to have had courts and the seely and unseely is a popular idea about the fae as well. And mm-hmm. like I said, I don't know what's actual legend and what's fictional, but the seely court are the summer and spring courts with a twist of evil quote evil. I mean, from yeah. human, human perspective. Yeah. And the unseely are like winter and autumn just more evil again, quote evil, Mm -hmm. um, the courts. So you have this, the seasonal courts, you have summer, winter, spring, and fall. And the summer court are the more benevolent of the Fae. If you can call them benevolent again, from human terms, Mm -hmm. they're considered more polite, frivolous, generally amicable, prone to mischief by our standards, Mm -hmm. uh, more friendly towards humans. They're tolerant of us. Um, the, their strongest, their power is in, is strongest during spring and summer, obviously Mm -hmm. the winter court is seen as more malevolent. They are not fans of humans. Uh, they're seen more cruel, although summer fay can be cruel too. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're strongest during fall and winter. So the summer and the winter are actually seen as being the strongest too. Mm-hmm. And then the spring and the fall also are fey courts, but not as strong as summer and winter. The spring fey are seen to be calmer than the summer fey. They're very curious. They're quiet, seductive. They can be very emotional. Mm-hmm. The fall fey are considered to be the fey that be work of the winter court. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've heard the tomb, the term trooping fey. Mm-mm. They're the fae that go in groups and do the work of the winter court. Um, they are known to make deals and return favors, and they're very devious. 
So the history, I tried to find the history to see if I could separate out what's fiction that we've all come to quote, know because we've read so many books Mm -hmm. and what was actually first considered the Fae from way back in the day. So it, it, I found that supposedly at the very beginning, there was only one court for all the Fae. And then over time, groups of the Fae no longer wanted to follow those rules that were set by that one court. And so they started branching off and, and uh, forming their own court. And that's the beginning of the Unseelie Court. Now, there is a series that I read. Karen Monning is the author, and she writes... All of her books are very fae oriented. Um, it's uh, like uh, urban fantasy, I guess is what you call it. And she, if you want to read a fiction, an excellent fiction series about the fae, that is the book to go see. And she and her and her fictional world has reasons for the unseely and the seely and all of those kind of things. So I urge you all to go read that. It's Karen Monning, M-O-N-I-N-G, and it's the Fever series. Fantastic mm-hmm. set of books. Mm-hmm. Um, at any rate, back back on, on track, the, <laughs> the courts are the social structure of the Fae society. Now, there are solitary Fae who do not swear allegiance to either court, mm-hmm. um, and those are actually considered to be the most dangerous fae by other fae hmm. because they don't follow any rules. They're not bound by anything. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also, I kept coming across reference to shadow courts, which hmm. I found interesting. Um, that realm is said to be home of dreams and nightmares. Oh, And there's a series of books that's really good about dealing with the court structure and it's the Grave Witch series. Mm-hmm. By Kalena Price, I believe. Okay, I, I love to read um, which uh, fictional books, urban fantasy books, and mm-hmm. so that is really good as well. And um, you should go check those out as well. And they have she she had a whole shadow court and an explanation for the shadow court and all of that and those mm-hmm. books. Hmm. So who are the royals? Like you said, Queen Titania and King Oberon are said Mm -hmm. to rule the summer court. That's the one that I think we all are most familiar with. Mm -hmm. Um, They mostly rule by proxy, though. They leave the day-to-day workings to lesser nobles. Um, Puck, you probably have heard Puck, you know, the little, he's got the bottom half is a goat with hooves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Pan, Pan is another name for Puck. Mm -hmm. Um, He is of the summer court. And then Queen Mab, as you said, is supposed to have ruled the winter court. Okay. But basically, this is because of the Jim Butcher books, the Dresden Files. I couldn't find anything else other than Shakespeare Mm -hmm. to mention Queen Mab. So I don't don't know. Okay. Um, There are other Fae theories that I wanted to go ahead and mention as well. As I was doing research, I came across things that we didn't really talk about Mm -hmm. in our other episode. So the power of names, it is said that if a human knows the true name of a fae, that they can gain power over that fae. Hmm. And there's another series of books that's urban fantasy. It's uh, Patricia Briggs is the author and it's the Mercy Thompson series. And there's a lot of fae in that set of books as well. Mm -hmm. And, And I think all of these authors have done their research to pull what they could find from real legends from the real folklore to implement them into their fictional works. So I think there is a lot that we can learn about the Fae from these fictional stories. Mm -hmm. Um, But the power of the name was one that I did see in that Mercy Thompson series. Mm -hmm. And it supposedly goes the other way around too. If a Fae learns your true name, they have power over you. But that brings me to the question of what is my true name? If it's not, you know, River Kane, what is it? Yeah. I was about do I to... have a do I have another name that you know means is there some magical name that I have? I don't know. I don't know. I was about to say, yeah, my if in that case, I am not Ren. <laughs> <laughs> call me Ren Samantha. Who? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ren who? Yeah. yeah, Ren who? Call me Samantha. <laughs> uh Fay Food. If humans eat Fay food, they become Fay marked. And the Fae are then alerted to them and can see them more clearly. And they oh. are more likely to be taken away to fairy oh. with the oh. Fae. Oh. 
Oh, <laughs> that's if you eat fey food in our world. But if you eat fey food in their world, if you're in fairy and you eat, eat fey food, then you become trapped there because you can't ever eat human <gasps> food again. You're ruined to the taste of human food. Why? It gives you no nourishment. It gives, it turns to oh, ash in your mouth. No. So you're stuck in fey. And fairy, I mean. But then does the fey food give you the nutrients that you need? As long as you stay there. But it, like, let's say I come back into like the real world and then I go back to the fey. Then. If you survive going back into the real world without food, then I think you would be fine. What if I take a buttload of fey food with me? <laughs> I think that I don't, I don't know if that works or not. And I did hear or read somewhere that if the fae that has you under their power, like if you, if you're in fairy with, as a prisoner of a particular fae, if they release you, Mm -hmm. then that they can release that hold over the fae food and you can then go back, but they have to do that voluntarily. Hmm. And it's not likely that they'll, they'll do that. I don't know though. I can be a pain in the butt. They might want to get rid of me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then the site, we talked a little bit about that in our crossover episode with the Witch Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Um, it said uh, what we didn't say in that episode was that supposedly there are some humans that have a genetic trait that allows them to see the Fae. Oh, really? I want that. <laughs> I, I know. I wonder if that's because they were maybe born to a fae you know maybe there there's fae lineage at somewhere in their yeah. ancestry and that's why they're able to see yeah um but otherwise like we said in which wednesdays you know you can use one of those hag stones or the st- there's another word for them the stones with a natural hole in it that mm-hmm. you find oh yeah, y- yeah, yeah you can look through those and see the fae oh that that reminds me i was gonna say uh i had a question oh can other fae see other fae like can elves see leprechauns and gnomes? Not gnomes. I think, not gnomes. I think so. They all have glamour. Okay. So whether they can glamour what they look like to other fae, I don't. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't know. That's interesting. And then the truth. It said that the fae can't lie, so they've actually become masters at twisting the truth, which mm-hmm. makes them pretty effective liars. Honestly. Yeah, I remember talking about that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so that's what I've got on the Fae and Fae royalty. Mm-hmm. That's what I have. I know that I want to go more in depth on each type of Fae. Mm-hmm. So we will definitely do that. And maybe like how we usually do our herbs where you talk about one herb, I talk about the other. Mm-hmm. We can do that with the Fae and like get through the Fae. And then if you guys have any other Fae that you want us to talk about that we oh, haven't yeah. listed, we would love to do that. Or if you want in particular, I mean, we can do it in the order of whatever. If there's some that you really want to know about, Mm -hmm. then let us know and we'll Mm -hmm. take those first. Yeah. So, okay, let's do our outro. (laughs) Okay. So you guys can find us on all social media platforms at C3 Witchy Podcast. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We are redoing our Instagram, like like completely wiped out our Instagram and we Mm -hmm. are redoing it. Um, And then... You can find us at www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you will find the links to all of our social medias, as well as our Patreon, our merch, and all of the platforms. And I mean, we don't have every single platform that you guys can listen to us on, on our website, but there are definitely links that you can get to each platform. Yeah, and you can listen to it on our website. If you Mm -hmm. don't know, you know, if you're not into Spotify or Apple Podcast, whatever it is, you can actually go to our website website and listen to it there yeah yeah and and um, we're on facebook now too the podcast episodes are actually on facebook oh yeah yeah now you can also listen on facebook yeah um and then i also want to say again thank you to our patrons that are supporting us and thank you adrian for um recommending this Mm -hmm. yes this topic we were so excited to do this topic um and i think that's it so we'll be back we'll be back (laughs) 